Hello, this is the TradeSet U.S. Stocks, Futures, and Forex Market Preview for the week beginning Sunday the 9th of July 2023, ending Friday the 14th. Uh, welcome to the second half of the year. Hope you had a good, basically, week off. Fourth of July week is never super exciting, although we did get some action, a couple of gaps and some other things, but it's really not a big volume week. And, you know, especially with Fourth of July on a Tuesday, Monday was a half day, it just doesn't add up too much. So, you know, it's kind of a vacation day, like the end of the year, and that's fine. So I uh, hope you have a good time. Uh, here's a look at the dollar index daily charts. You know, not much here until Friday where we kind of dipped. You know, we had the good ADP number earlier in the week. We had the uh, lighter uh, unemployment number or the non farm payroll number on Friday. Okay, so that's where we're at. I mean, there's nothing else to talk about from that perspective. Uh, on the Forex side, pound dollar approaching new highs, the euro Dollar, obviously the inverse of the dollar index, went up. The pound yen kind of rolled over a bit. Uh, but if, if you look at it, we're still very flat for the last 10 days, so there wasn't much there. And Forex is pretty dead usually in the summer. Here's the ES front month futures contract. This is the daily chart of the broad market futures form. Look, and we tick up a couple times. We're going to get uh, 12 to 13. We'll get a 13 sell signal very quickly on the ES. And so just be aware of that. Uh, but we are kind of hanging at highs for the year. The S&P cash, uh, same kind of deal, obviously, because it should be. NASDAQ 100 also up here at your highs. Uh, so just uh, you know, be aware of all that. We'll see uh, what happens. By the way, if you look at the NASDAQ futures, uh, not near a 13 like the ES is, um, but still obviously near the highs. Crude oil uh, back up a bit to 73.6, but still in the lower half of the year's range. And it's been a pretty flat year, despite the war and everything uh, since November. We haven't really gone too far, uh, you know, sitting in a range between the 84 and 68 or whatever-ish is kind of the general mean there. Gold down from the highs by quite a bit. Uh, so there's that. All right, so that's just the uh, <clears throat> the bigger top item numbers. Uh, Bitcoin sitting at 30,329. As I do this, obviously it's open 24-7. TLT to 20 year bond ETF has dipped, so uh, bonds down rates up, as they say. We're approaching, you know, the mortgage rates are heading up right now, and I think there's some concern. There's an inverted yield curve. Everybody's talking about it. Where's the recession? Where's the, uh, is there a recession coming? You know, the job numbers are good. Are they bad? We get mixed numbers this week. And then when will we see what happens? Uh, we'll see. We'll see still, obviously. Is there a crash coming? <sighs> Boy, you know, it's hard to tell at this point. The VIX closes at 1485. Uh, it hit back down to the, just below 13 and then spiked to 17 uh, on the, uh, the ADP number, but then came back on the uh, other number. So it is what it is. Advanced decline ratio has been all over the board. It was negative 2,000. And worse on the NASDAQ, by the way, on Thursday, but then very positive on Friday. So who knows? Uh, trend closes at 1.02, uh, the 10 day moving, I'm sorry, at 0.9, the 10 day moving average at 1.02, not under that 0.85 level. That would be a sell signal, although we have been under it once about uh, two weeks ago. Uh, ES, here's the intraweek action. I don't like looking at some of this just because, you know, you got a half day on Monday, you got. Uh, that was July 3rd, as you can see. July 4th was 4th of July. They pretend to open the markets for no reason. You know, then Wednesday we kind of gap down, filled. So like all that's a waste. And then suddenly Thursday this big gap down. Like Thursday and Friday are the only two real trading days of the week. So you know, it's again, it's a big joke week, and I don't want to get too into it. But there's just not much here from a technical perspective to look at. Um, we can look at some of the key stocks, obviously. Uh, so we've got uh, Apple, uh, which was. Uh, you know, down uh, 92 cents on Friday, but it's near the highs. Amazon uh, up a dollar 79 after all that. It's near the highs. Meta is near the highs. Uh, Google's, you know, we'll call it not quite near the highs, but high into the range. Goldman Sachs low into the range. Netflix very near the highs. Tesla near the highs. Nvidia near the highs. And Zoom near the highs. You know, everything up or down just a little bit. So it's not really worth comparing where they were up or down, but. Um, it is what it is. So I would again. This is like the this is like the last week of the year. It's never exciting. We don't get to ex talk about like the technicals because there's really nothing there. Uh, when we look at next week, just in terms of U.S. data, final wholesale inventories on Monday at 10 a.m. Uh, consumer credit at three. Tuesday, really nothing. Wednesday, the CPI. That's a big one. So we half size in forex ahead of the CPI on Wednesday. Uh, 
Crude oil inventories on Wednesday at 1030. Uh, Canada's got a rate announcement there. Uh, we've got the beige book here in the U.S., 10-year bond auction. Okay. Then Thursday, uh, PPI, the weekly initial and continuing jobless claims numbers, Natty Gas, 30-year bond auction, federal budget balance uh, on Thursday, and then Friday, uh, import export prices and University of Michigan sentiment here in the U.S. Trade balance number out of Europe. That's about it. So not the most exciting week. The CPI is probably going to be the highlight because obviously we're all watching inflation. That's on Wednesday. We will see what we get. Charts as usual brought to you by DigiTrader. If you have not yet taken a free trial of our services, feel free to do so. We will help you out for a couple weeks. Have a great trading week.